Of course, we are now into the very heart of the Jubilee year of mercy. And as we celebrate this extraordinary year of grace, 2016, most of us, I hope, have a clear understanding of what it is, what it's about, and how providential it truly is for the whole world. It's not by chance that our Holy Father, Pope Francis, designated this year as the year of mercy. Think about what is coming after the Jubilee year in 2017. Now, Pope Benedict XVI said he believed that 2017 would be a very significant year for the church and for the whole world. He didn't say exactly what significance he thought it would have. And believe me, I, I don't try to play the prophet. I am not in the business of trying to predict times and dates and events. But think about this. Think about what is coming in the span of just one month of October of 2017. It will be the 100th anniversary of the final apparition of our Blessed Mother at Fatima and the miracle of the sun. It will be the 100th anniversary of the start of the communist revolution in Russia the spread of worldwide militant atheism, still bearing its rotten fruits today. It will also be the 500th anniversary of the start of the Protestant movement, the revolt against the church that divided the Christian world and introduced the doctrinal confusion that has endured for five centuries. All in the span of this one month, Pope St. John Paul II, who was certainly a prophetic man, I believe, said, there is no such thing as coincidence in the realm of divine providence. Hmm? Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, who I believe was also a prophetic man, said that history has proven that calamitous events come upon the church in 500 year intervals. He said, before the hand of God comes down upon the world, it always comes down upon the church. Recall that uh, Pope Leo XIII once had a terrifying vision of Satan. Satan appeared to Pope Leo in a horrifying form and boasted, 100 years and I will destroy the church. And after that terrifying vision, Pope Leo XIII composed that magnificent prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Now, if our Lord had to promise the gates of hell would never destroy his church, you can presume it was because he knew the gates of hell were going to try. They're going to go on trying until the end of the world. But the question has always arisen. When the devil boasted he would destroy the church in a hundred years, when did that hundred years begin? When did this all out final assault on the church begin? Well, uh, I will give you my opinion for what it's worth. I don't say that I'm right, you can take it or leave it. But I believe that 100 years began in October of 1917. And if I am right, something is coming. The devil is raging right now. The devil is on a rampage all over the world because he knows his time is short. Friends, these are truly historic, if not desperate times for the church and the whole world. One thing is for sure, we need the mercy of God. Pope Francis understands this very clearly. We need the mercy of God. The subject, the message of divine mercy is deadly serious business. 
precisely because, as our Lord revealed to St. Faustina, it is the last and only hope for so many lost and confused souls in this day and age. And I would suggest to you that includes the vast majority of our young people. It is, in fact, the final hope for humanity. We live in an age when Christianity is under worldwide attack. We see our holy faith being driven from the east by persecution and exile. We see our faith being rejected in the west by paganism, secularism. What is paganism? The essence of paganism is idolatry. And the most insidious form of idolatry is the worship of the self, the exaltation of the self over God. It is truly, as Pope Francis has said, an age of apostasy. Pope St. John Paul II once said this, quote, we are living in apocalyptic times. We are now facing the final confrontation between the church and the anti-church, the gospel and the anti-gospel, end quote. The Catechism of the Catholic Church in the section under eschatology, eschatology um, is a theological term for the latter days and the last things. But in the section under eschatology, the Catechism says that many Catholics mistakenly believe that in the latter days, the days before our Lord's second coming, the church will gain a gradual ascendancy over evil. Not so, says the catechism. The church teaches that in the end times, the church is destined to suffer in a mystical way all that our Lord suffered at the time of his passion. That is to say, Christ in his mystical body will be abandoned, betrayed, denied, scourged, mocked, and crucified. We are called to stand with our blessed mother, the mother of mercy, the mother of sorrows, at the foot of the cross and be faithful. Those who persevere to the end will be saved. I find it interesting that in St. Faustina's diary, she recorded eight explicit eschatological statements from our Lord and Our Lady. Let me share these with you. Just take a moment here, but I think it's worthwhile. From the diary, entry 848, Jesus says to St. Faustina, my daughter, speak to the world about my mercy. It is a sign for the end times. After it will come the day of justice. While there is still time, let them have recourse to the fount of my mercy. Let them profit from the blood and water which gushed forth for them. Entry 429. Jesus says, you will prepare the world for my final coming. Entry 83. Write this. Before I come as the just judge, I am coming first as the king of mercy. Entry 1146. Write, before I come as a just judge, I first open wide the door of my mercy. He who refuses to pass through the door of my mercy must pass through the door of my justice. Entry 965. Secretary of my mercy, write, tell souls, about this great mercy of mine because the awful day, the day of my justice is near. Entry 1588, before the day of justice, I am sending the day of mercy. Entry 1732, I bear a special love for Poland and if she will be obedient to my will, I will exalt her in might and holiness. From her will come forth the spark that will prepare the world for my final coming. And finally, entry 635. These are the words of our Blessed Mother to St. Faustina. Our Lady says, You 
must speak to the world about his great mercy and prepare the world for the second coming of him who will come not as a merciful savior but as a just judge. Oh, how terrible is that day. Determined is the day of justice, the day of divine wrath. The angels tremble before it. Speak to souls about this great mercy while it is still time for granting mercy. Hmm? Very powerful. Very convincing. My brothers and sisters, we are living in a merciless age. It is clear, it's clear to me at least, the world has rejected the message of divine mercy. You know, there's an old saying in spiritual theology that both God and the devil hate a vacuum. Where the true God is driven out, the devil will rush in to fill that void, and there will literally be hell to pay. You see, when the true God is driven out, you get the things that are the opposite of God, the opposite of God's perfections, the opposite of God's love, God's truth, God's goodness, God's mercy. For example, the one thing that is most characteristic of terrorist groups like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, Boko Haram, is that their members are absolutely, totally merciless. They're absolutely brutal. It's a merciless age. A while back, I was watching a documentary on PBS, Public Education Channel. It was a documentary on the Islamic State. Someone had smuggled out of the Islamic State a video that had been recorded, the secret camera. It was recorded in the city of Raqqa, which is the capital of the Islamic State. The goings on around the city. At one point, the video showed a young woman being publicly stoned to death. A young woman who was accused of committing adultery. And I'll tell you, it was one of the most awful, one of the most heartbreaking things that I have ever seen on television. This young woman was brought out before an assembled crowd she was made to stand in her own grave. Then they called a man forward to cast the first stone at her. The man was the young woman's own father. The father stood over his daughter. The daughter said to him, Father, will you forgive me? The father said, No. No, I will not forgive you. Hopefully, God will forgive you. Allah will forgive you, but I will not. Then he picked up a large stone with both hands, cast it down on her, then the rest followed suit. And I'll tell you what, they were not just throwing stones at this poor woman. They were picking up these huge rocks, boulders with both hands standing over her and casting them right down on top of her. It's horrifying, horrifying. We live in a merciless age, a merciless age. You see, the more the world becomes de-Christianized, the more it becomes dehumanized, merciless, brutal. Bishop Oliver Dasha of Nigeria is the bishop of that part of northeastern Nigeria where thousands of Christians have been attacked and butchered for their faith by the brutal terrorist group called Boko Haram. Bishop Dasha has seen 6,000 members of his flock murdered. Hundreds of young Christian women kidnapped and sold into slavery. 10 years ago, there were about 125,000 Catholics in his diocese. Today, there are less than 60,000. 
Most have had to flee their homes and flee for their lives. One night, Bishop Dasha was praying in a Eucharistic Adoration Chapel when he had a vision. And our Lord appeared to Bishop Dasha. Our Lord said nothing at first, but then our Lord held out his nail-pierced hands. He extended his hands to the bishop, and in his hands, in our Lord's hands, there was a sword. Bishop Dasha took the sword from our Lord's hands. Jesus said to him, Boko Haram is gone. Boko Haram is gone. And as Jesus vanished from the bishop's sight, the sword our Lord had placed into his hands turned into the Holy Rosary. The Rosary. You see, friends, as I say, the spiritual battle of our time has become the spiritual massacre of our time and that the casualties in this battle will be lost forever. And you know that when you're in a war, the only way you can win is when you've got the right kind of weapons. You gotta have the right kind of weapons. I'm a priest, but I own an assault weapon. You surprised to hear that? Yes, I own an assault weapon with a high-capacity magazine and a 50-round clip. <laughs> it is the Holy Rosary. That is the only assault weapon I will ever need. Hopefully, it will be the only assault weapon that you will ever need. It is the weapon to assault the gates of hell, our beads for battle. For Padre Pio called the rosary his weapon, the shield against Satan. Friends, you understand that at every moment we have access to one of the most powerful weapons on earth, prayed by an army of holy souls, humble souls, hidden souls, unknown souls, the souls that God raises up as he casts down the proud. And history has proven time and time again the effect of the rosary. The rosary defeats tyrants. It crushes heresies. It brings back sinners. It turns back invasions. It knocks down Berlin walls. It keeps families together. It brings peace to the heart and joy to the soul. Ask yourself, what does the Heavenly Father refuse the mother of his only begotten son? Nothing. No, the rosary does not appeal to the proud, and it never will. Vain intellectuals reject it, unbelievers scoff at it, modernists hate it. What do we care? The rosary is the prayer of the most humble of God's children. That should surprise no one. Pope St. Pius X once said, Give me an army of holy souls praying the rosary, and I will conquer the world. You see, any serious student of church history will be quick to tell you that the normative state of the church is turmoil, conflict, struggle. The church, the bride of Christ, will always follow her divine spouse along the way of the cross. And again, this is how God gives his faithful people the opportunity to practice heroic virtue. And history has proven time and time again that God always raises up the greatest saints in times of crisis and confusion for his church, and the present age will be no different. You know, if you study church history, you will see that some of Christianity's most decisive battles, La Rochelle, the Ponto, Malta, Vienna, were fought and won not so much with the sword but with the Holy Rosary. Pope St. John Paul II once said this, the church has always attributed special efficacy to this prayer and trusting to the rosary the most difficult problems. At times when Christianity itself seemed under threat, its deliverance was attributed to the power of this prayer and Our Lady of the Rosary was acclaimed as the one whose intercession brought salvation. 
Why should we not once more have recourse to the rosary with the same faith as those who have gone before us? The rosary retains all of its power and continues to be a valuable pastoral resource for every good evangelizer. I look to you, brothers and sisters of every state of life, to you, Christian families, to you, the sick and the elderly, and to you, young people, confidently take up the rosary once again. Today, I willingly entrust to the power of this prayer the cause of peace in the world and the cause of the family. May this appeal of mine not go unheard. The former Vatican Secretary of State, Archbishop Carlo Cafara, said recently that shortly before her death, he had written a personal letter to Sister Lucia. Sister Lucia dos Santos was uh, one of the three shepherd children that Our Lady had appeared to at Fatima. And uh, Archbishop Kefara had written to Sister Lucia asking for clarification about certain things Our Lady had revealed at Fatima. He actually did not expect a reply. Sister Lucia was in her last years, not well. But to his great surprise, he received a letter back from Sister Lucia in which Sister Lucia wrote that Our Lady had indicated to them that the last battle, hell's final assault on the church and on humanity will be the attack on marriage and the family. The attack on marriage and the family. You see, today, our Lady, the Mother of Mercy, is calling all of us to become a great force of prayer and reparation in the world. And by the grace of God, she has given us the weapon to fight with in the spiritual battle of our time, the Holy Rosary. The Rosary will always be an instrument of God's mercy. The weapon we will use to bring about the conversion of sinners, world peace, peace in our homes, peace in our families, and peace in our own hearts. I'll leave you with these words of our Lord of St. Faustina. Jesus says, do not fear, my little child, you are not alone. Fight bravely, because my arm is supporting you. Fight for the salvation of souls, exhorting them to trust in my mercy, as that is your task in this life and in the life to come.